Hi, so as Adam mentioned, I'm going to talk about optimizing performance for jQuery Mobile. And I've just kind of subtitled this, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Because we've done, made a lot of changes lately to allow performance improvements within jQuery Mobile. And just a little bit about me. I have 16 years of experience doing web development. I'm the, as Adam mentioned, the development lead on jQuery Mobile. I'm also a team member for jQuery UI. And right now, I'm really focusing on the merger between uh, jQuery Mobile and UI. But back to that first slide about what have you done for me lately. What have we done? We're releasing 141 coming up really soon. It includes a lot of bug fixes, over 60 of them, and major improvements to our swipe events and panel widget. But I don't know about you, but I hate waiting for bug fix releases because I always have that app I'm working on, and I just need that one fix in there. It drives me nuts. Oops. So we decided to give you a little treat today. We're going to do the release 141 live during my talk. <laughs> Oh, looks like we lost the monitor, though. Uh, we get screen on there? Not sure what's going on. <laughs> oh. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to start this off. And it takes a little while to run. So I'll continue my talk while it's running. And I'll keep coming back to it throughout the talk. In theory. <laughs> All right, well, apparently this was not going to work out today. Uh, Gislin's going to go get that running, though, so it won't be on screen, but it will be released during the talk. It'll be done by the end, we promise. So back to the talk. So why is mobile performance so important? I think most people here probably already know the answer to that, why it's so important on mobile. But just in case there's anyone that doesn't, it come down, comes down to two really main components, which is the cellular connection speed and the performance of the device hardware. This just shows average SunSpider benchmark. It shows SunSpider as any random benchmark on different devices, desktop, and mobile. And as you can see, this is really bad when it comes to mobile. All of your modern browsers, really small numbers. When you get into these even fairly new devices, their performance just can't even begin to compare. And when it comes to connection, this is just Time Warner Cable's basic broadband. You get pretty good connection on that, 15 megabyte down. But now AT&T 3G service, you see it's only four. It's a huge difference in download speed when you go from your just regular broadband to 3G. On average, on both of these, you're actually about three times slower so you really have to worry about performance on mobile devices. There is actually some hope when it comes to hardware performance, though. Not on that chart is the iPhone 5S that was released a while back. I'm sure everyone knows about that. That actually is starting to approach the numbers that desktop browsers are hitting. Uh, before that, the fastest mobile device got about a 900 on SunSpider, whereas desktops are getting in the just over 100. And the iPhone 5S actually gets about 400. So it's a drastic improvement over anything else that was out at the time. One of the best tips that I can give you to improve performance in your jQuery mobile apps, though, is to simplify your pages. Reduce the number of widgets that you're using in each page. Reduce the size of your pages. Limit the size of like, lists and tables, especially those really long lists and tables that people like to do on mobile devices because it's so easy to just scroll through are a killer when it comes to performance. Instead, consider pagination. And to reduce download time and HTTP requests, some things that you can really do on the connection side are to combine all your scripts and CSS and minify those. 
and do not include scripts in the actual pages of your jQuery mobile app. Instead, make sure that they're all loaded in the head on every page. You can also consider using the multi-page template for some purposes. The multi-page template allows you to have all of your pages in a single HTTP request, so that way you make one request and you have everything that you are going to need for the entire life of your app. So you have faster transitions, faster page loads, but the multi-page template does have its limitations. That initial download time to show that first page is going to be slower. You can end up with a really large DOM depending on your app. It uses a lot more system memory, which is very limited on mobile devices. And you can't load multi-page template pages via AJAX in our navigation system. So it's really not good if you're going to have a large number of pages in your app. This is the typical template that we use for a single page document. You can see it looks just about like any normal page that you'd make. Uh, even without jQuery mobile, you have you know, your head, body, there's some divs and whatever in there, a header. And normally, that whole thing is transferred on every request. Now, the single page template does have some downfalls as well. Everything is sent on every request. But when you're, they're loaded via AJAX, all that, you're act that actually gets used is the first div with a data roll of page. So you're sending a lot of unused information with every request. And that unused information leads to extra processing time as well when the pages are being loaded. So to optimize that, we can add a little bit of server-side processing in. So what we're doing here is we're checking to see if the request is a regular HTTP request or if it's an AJAX request. And if it's an AJAX request, we're only going to send the div with the data roll of page there. We're going to exclude the body. We're going to exclude the head. We're going to exclude all the opening and closing tags for HTML so that all we're sending is that div. So now on the request, all you're sending is this small piece of information, which is just your main page div and the content in it. However, starting with jQuery Mobile 1.4, widgets can be used outside pages. So if you have common elements like a header or footer that are shared across your pages, you can now optimize this even more. So we can take the header and footer from our last one and move it outside of the page and include those in the part that's only going to be sent for HTTP requests. And so now, with each request, all we're actually sending is this small little piece of information. That's your actual page content that needs to be updated. So now we're sending a lot less information, and it's going to parse a lot quicker. So the updated template will reduce the amount of information that you're transferring, it reduces the markup that needs to be parsed, it avoids reinitializing widgets of your common nav elements, panels, toolbars, things like that. You get smoother transitions and faster page loads. Custom builds are another great way to increase performance, because it reduces your file sizes, reduces the amount of time the library takes to spin up, because you're not initializing all of these components that you're never going to use. And it allows you to remove parts of the library that you just don't need in your app, because we have a lot of different components in jQuery Mobile, and we don't expect you to actually need every one of those in every app that you make. So I did a just custom build. It's a sample one. It included some common elements. And it actually reduces the size of the JavaScript by 50%, and it reduces the CSS by an amazing 80%. A big part of that has to do with the transitions. Uh, most people are only going to use maybe one or two transitions in their app. They're not going to use all of the 12 that we provide. So removing all those really reduces the file size. 1.4 also brings a new theme that, can re that really reduces the amount of DOM manipulation that we're doing when you're initializing widgets and starting up. You, here we have just a basic button. It says button in it. And if we start out with that, in 1.3, you'd get this huge block of code that include, after it's enhanced, that includes a bunch of spans that have been inserted, the original element's there, but it's going to be hidden, and it's all been wrapped. However, in 1.4, we've now made it so that all we're doing for manipulation for simple things like buttons is just adding some classes. There's no actual DOM elements being inserted or wrapped. So that really improves the performance for a lot of our common widgets. Another thing that you can do to improve performance is consider not using the auto enhancement for things like buttons and list views, because then you can 
avoid the DOM manipulation of even adding those classes. You don't have to run any JavaScript because all, you're, all we're doing for you is adding classes. You can do that yourself in your markup. And you can exclude the widgets from your custom build because you no longer need to use them. And it just make, it's a really simple thing you can do that will really improve performance on a lot of apps. Another thing that we've added in 1.4 to improve performance is the enhanced option. It tells the framework that you need to, that the, what you've provided is already in an enhanced state, so we don't need to do any DOM manipulation. Removes, by removing that need for DOM manipulation, it really improves the widget startup. So then all we're doing when you are a call a widget is setting some variables and attaching event handlers. Not all of our widgets support this currently. Unfortunately, we did run out of time when we were working on 1.4 to get this into all of them. But currently, it's supported by the text input, button, toolbars, flip switch, control group, collapsible, collapsible set, pop-up, table, and page. So on any of those, you can provide the markup pre-enhanced from your server. And then you don't need to worry about any DOM manipulation on startup. Also in 1.4, we've added a defaults flag. By setting data defaults true on any element, we won't parse data attributes for options. We'll just assume that you want to use the default set. So a lot of the time, that's used a lot for things where you're just going to, you just want to call the generic widget. The way it comes out is good enough for you. You don't need to set any custom options. This will, because reading data attributes is a pretty slow process overall. So by avoiding reading all these in every time that we initialize a widget, it really improves the performance. Also in 1.4, we've added just some conveniences, which are $.mobile.window and $.mobile.document. These just save references to the jQuery object for window and document. Because we found that these are getting, were being used repeatedly by people when they're attaching event handlers because of our AJAX navigation system. You're always binding them on the document. So this way, you're not actually running jQuery uh, on each time. Another thing you can do is don't actually use our auto initialization. This is a really great shortcut for when you're just prototyping up your app and things like that. But it ha when you use auto initialization, we have to parse the DOM every time looking for all these widgets and initializing them. So in looking for data attribute selectors is really slow. It's the, one of the slowest selectors you can have. So avoiding this will improve your performance quite a bit. So to do this, all you have to do is leave your markup the way you would, except don't add the data roles in. And for things like inputs, you want to set your keep native selector as well to avoid those. And then all you do is just call your widgets in JavaScript the same way you would if you were using a jQuery UI widget. And that will improve your performance quite a bit. In addition to that, don't use the data attributes, like we mentioned a moment ago, for options when you're doing this. Instead, leave all those off, even if you need to set custom options and set the defaults flag, and then you can just pass an options object to the widget the same way you would in jQuery UI. Put this cat in here just for Dave Methvin. I don't think he's in here, but he loves cats. So. These are some things that we're looking into for the future. One of those is initialization-free widgets. Initialization-free widgets might not be something that you've heard of, but it's something that we've been looking into. Um, it's nothing that we have current plans on yet. But basically, it means that you will never have to actually call one of your widgets. You will just provide markup, and the widget, instead of attaching on each one, actually attaches, will attach global handlers so that everything works, even though you've never called any piece of JavaScript on any of your widgets. Uh, you can see that I have a link here to a tutorial on that that was written by Scott Gonzalez. He has made one sample widget using that. And it's a really neat concept that we're going to be looking into for the future. Another thing that we've been looking into is a new high-performance CSS framework. Now, some of you may be asking, well, you just got a new CSS theme for 1.4. Why are you already looking into new things? Well. We've learned a lot from our 1.4 theme and our old one, and, and also the jQuery UI theme. And we've found a lot of ways that we can improve this. And we also want to share a theme between jQuery mobile and jQuery UI. Some of the things that we're looking into with this new theme are a BEM class structure, which means that you'll only, we'll only be setting one class on any individual thing. So it avoids any need for specificity, and it improves this performance of the selectors a lot, which greatly improves rendering. 
We're also going to be adding and looking into doing rendering performance testing for this theme so that we know it's as fast as it can possibly be for all of our widgets. It's going to be shared. This is, we're beginning work on this, but it's still in very, very early stages. So it's something that you can be kind of keeping an eye out for, but it might be a while before there's anything there. So, uh, Gislin, do we have the upload? So, we've had a little bit of a snafu here with the release that was supposed to be part of this. But right now, we have that uploading. It'll be live shortly. And let's see if we can... Did you do the blog post yet? All right, well, let's get that. And here we are, 141 released. So, sorry that we had a little bit of a snafu here. 